episode of Camogie Report podcast. Uh, we are here in the County Camogie Grounds in the right to preview the upcoming FPD Insurance Senior, Intermediate, Junior A, Junior B and Junior B2 Championship. We had a fantastic championship last year and um, lots of great matches, great county champions, but I feel this year is going to be even bigger and better. So with me this evening to preview the championship and look ahead uh, to all the games is uh, representatives from all of last year's winners. We have Dirty Dunn from Drum and Inch, Claude Hardin from Borland Wella, and Simon here is Lee Cleary from Laura, and Quilly McCarthy from Naka Villa de Ski Kickens. Unfortunately, nobody from Supermines could be here this evening, the Junior B2 winners, but uh, we'll be catching up with someone later on the week on Zoom, and we'll preview the Junior B2 Championship then in uh, part two of this podcast. So, uh, ladies, thanks for joining me. I know you're all making your uh, podcast debut, so a bit nervous here, but um, we'll get going. We no fear of anybody. And um, Celine, so we'll begin with you. Um, we'll just look back on, I suppose, last year's county final. Um, you'd lost four finals in a row before winning the Junior B title last year. There must have been huge relief and uh, excitement after winning that game. Oh, yeah, like massive excitement. Like, trying to win it for the last four years and then just winning by a point from the end. Like, and like you said there, you were up, um, you are down actually, sorry, at halftime, 1-5 to 5 points, and then um, you really got going in the second half, went into the lead, but you, uh, you got a goal in the 49 minute, that put you one, or one, one ten to 1-5 one up, yeah, and it looked like you were going to go on and there, but when Pack Boris came back again, and like you said, you held on to that one point win. Yeah, just about like, because like we were winning well, and like I think we talked and had it, and then they started getting points. We got a penalty and put over the bar, thank God, but yeah, yeah in the end then we were just delighted, we were just waiting for the final whistle then, but yeah, it was over it. And so you're up to Ray this year, how was training going, how was preparation going? Yeah, training was going well, uh, we have a new manager now, Corey Martin, so he's keeping us on our toes this year. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, big step up now from junior being last year, but yeah, we're going well. We look forward to it, very good. Um, so Quiva then intermediate county final, um, you won that last year again. Probably got off to a slow start, but we got a goal. I think it was Arena Friday got a goal just before yeah. the water break, and they really dominated the game from there on in. Yeah, we probably hadn't heard up to the first water break, but I think we got two big goals just before it, and we went in ahead, which I suppose was great for us because we hadn't really heard, it, and then we kind of just put our game plan into action. And I suppose in the second quarter, when it came up to half time, then. We didn't even have to push on, but they came back at us again as we did they would, so we were delighted to get over the line in the end. Yeah, I suppose the goals is the big team there, scoring five goals, 5 14, great score in there. Uh, it's funny kind of talking about water breaks, it seems so yeah, long ago. So <laughs> <laughs> really, we're looking back on uh, match reports. But um, Dee, then you won't be involved with Drummond Inch this year. Uh, you're busy a few months ahead of you expecting the, uh, your first child, but uh, you must have great satisfaction looking back on last year's final and and then, you know, getting over the line against Kenoki again. Yeah, it is, I suppose it, it's a great achievement to win the three in a row and even though uh, thrown in the Munster final in the middle, it's great, but it was a, a tough out few years of just keeping going constantly, but yeah, it's a great achievement to have done it and hopefully the girls can carry on again this year. Um, and Claude, then Junior A comes to Champions last year, um, again, a very tough game, I suppose, one thing that happened to you in the final, I suppose nobody ever wants to happen in the final, was obviously going down to 14 players, made it very tough, but you really pulled away from the money goal in the last 10 minutes, and I think you ran out five point winners. Yeah, it was a well hard fought battle, I suppose we knew going into it, we had played money goal in the championship in the second round, and we just barely met them again, and that's when we knew what we were going into, a tough battle. And I suppose when they have key players like Mary Ryan and Ryan Team, you know, like it's never going to be an easy an easy win and I suppose when we went down to the 14 players and that's such a key player like if Kevin had to get sent off or sent her back it was enough but when we went in at half time we regrouped and we trained hard all year so we just knew if we were going to do it we had to do it for her like she was devastated after getting sent off and we just knew uh, we had to do it for her like so. Yeah. And then I suppose you're up to me this year you've already um made a good impressive start, you won the intermediate league and so how's training going and how are things going? Are you hoping to do like Naka Villa did and, and go up, get two promotions in two years? Yeah, I suppose there seems to be a bit of a trend there, like once you come out with junior A they seem to be winning the intermediate like the stars done the same a few years ago, so I don't know, I hope the trend continues but um, 
yeah, we've done very well there in the league, winning it, and I suppose they're a very hard, hard for wins game. I suppose a killer on, they put up big scores in all their league games, and they'll be one that we'll have to look out for in the championship as well, I suppose. And we took a few weeks off training there after winning the league, and we have a few players gone abroad, like Sarah Blaney has gone away to America. So she's only going to be back like a week before championship, so it'll be great to get her back in training. Her presence alone is just massive, like in training and stuff. So it'll be great to have her back. Yeah, we would. And Queen, again, obviously you're up senior this year, and a big loss, obviously yourself to your cruise. It's going to be a big blow for you, but no doubt you'll be watching on and cheering on the girls this year. How how do you think you're going to senior championship? Yeah, I suppose we're under no illusions that it's going to be a massive step up for us. But I suppose every year, no one really thinks we're going to win it and we come out and we have won a few in the last few years so look, it is a big step up but like when you have players like Arena Friday, Brett Ryan, and Eve Slattery from our Hartford, we know what we can do like so yeah, hopefully we can. You'll be there or thereabouts again. Um, so Celine, we're just going to look at the junior B there, just looking in a bit more detail. Um, so what, you know, the idea that what girls in here I suppose, look, you know, you can chat about the junior B knowing that you're not going to say that and then offend them. Yeah, but you won't say that and then offend them that you won't be playing against this year because obviously yeah. you're up junior A this year. But the junior B groups then, group one, you have Carrick Swans, Cash King Harmon. So that's their second team. They got to the junior B two final last year and actually Silver Mines and, and Cash have moved up to, to junior B this year. And they've got Manu Glen Goon, McCarthy Burrows, Port Row, that's group one. And Group two, then we have Ballingarry, Mile Over, Silvermines, and St. Conan's Ross Gray. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's top two into semi finals there in both groups. So look, McCarthy are last year's finalists, and they'll be many people's favourites. You know, it's, it's not always the way if you get beaten one year and come back in the next year, but I think they will be many people's favourites. They won all their games in the league this year, and they did a massive win over Cash in the league final. Yeah. So, could you see them winning it this year? I can, yeah. Like they, they have a serious squad there. Like a lot of young girls as well. Um, they when we played the last year, I think they did a lot on the under sixteen and a few reminders as well, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of experience there as well. Yeah, because I was looking back on the match report from you in last year, and I just noticed that Emma Sullivan actually didn't play. She was oh, injured. She yeah. was injured. And yeah. she had been their main player all year. She she played minor, didn't she? Yeah, she yeah, was a county minor, and then. Even this year, they Molly O'Dwyer, Alicia Kearney and Kate Ralph, they were all three county minors this year. Kira Shelley, uh, Caitlin Shelley and Sarah Corcoran were all three county under 16s and none of them were actually on the team no. that lost the final last year. So no. they have the girls from last year and then they have those six up and coming. Yeah, they have a serious one coming up like, um, and I've seen their score against, what's it, Cash and then yeah. unbelievable score. Like, so they're definitely contenders for this year. And what you call um, the main players last year, like Katrina Walsh, very young. Yeah. yeah, and their goalie, um, Emma Flanagan, is it? Yeah. She pulled off some massive saves in the final against us, so she's a she's good one as well. So they've plenty of talent there, and they're yeah. many people's favourites, and they have a big squad, they have a second team this year during the Junior B2 competition as well. But I suppose favourites can always be beaten, and there's teams out there that can beat them, and they could, you know, they could. Hot easily in a semi final or a final, and um, like support row there is just looking at um, in the league. You know, McCarthy bet most of the teams well in the league this year, but Port Row put up 2 8 against them, it was 4 9 to 2 8. And Port Row some uh, some good players, you played them before, did um, I think we played them last year, no, but um, I've heard that they do have a good few players. Um, did Claudia you know Ashley Sheehy? Yeah, Ashley yeah, yeah. 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 the juniors this year and playing full back for us. Yeah. She's really developed over the last years. I think he's a really, really good player. Right? Yeah, I think she's a key player for Porto. They have likes to show Adam, Claire O'Brien, yes, and Madden as well. So, do you know, and there's other teams there, like there's nothing, any time Porto, Garten Who, or Carrick play each other, there's nothing between any of those teams. Yeah, Garten Who have a serious squad as well. Like we played them in the semi final last year in Raspberry, and like it was the rain, like that day, only like what if there's laid grass left on the field? It's like a fun <laughs> But like in the or who would read that day as well, like they have some savage players. They like we were just we just met them at the end, like yeah. it's a serious game. It was actually I found that tougher than the actual final itself. Okay. Yeah, they they're another one. So they're a team that could yeah. definitely put it up to anyone this year and I wouldn't they were in um, 
They were in their under 21, you know, the new under 21 competition okay. this year. They got to the under 21A county final. Um, now, and I can hardly bet well in the end, but I was very impressed with some of the players there. Um, so then the other group, Ballingarry, Mile Rovers, Silver Mines again up from winning the last Junior B2 last year, and then St. Conan's Ross Grey. Like, that's all their team for Ballingarry, Mile Rovers, St. Conan's, it's all their club's first team. So yeah. they're going to be serious teams as well. But yeah. I suppose McCarkey, they won't like us saying this, but I do think they will be hot favourites for this competition. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah but I suppose Quiva, you were probably hot favourites last year for the intermediate, and very easy could have got caught there in the semi final against Peter Yeah, well, people told us we were, but I suppose we didn't really listen. Um, so yeah, we obviously went extra time against Kilran and I suppose everyone was right off Kilran the day of the match, but like when you play with the likes of Laura Shinners um in Venice mm -hmm. for Kilran, like they can score goals and like any free from anywhere like they can put over the bar, so like they're gonna be a serious threat this year again in intermediate. And the other semi final then was Shannon Rovers and Boris Lee and that I mean there was only one point in between that as well. So and like I think Boris Lee were without Nicole Walsh that day. So like I know in the group stages different teams might have bet people well, you know, there was intermediate, everyone plays everyone. Um, but when it came down to the semi finals knockout, top four teams, absolutely not between them. Yeah, I suppose the format does like you don't know who's gonna end up in the top four and anyone can be anyone on any given day. But yeah, Bursley and Shannon Rovers, like Shannon Rovers obviously came out on top, but Bursley have a lot of young players coming up, like they've three on the other 16 panel this year, and they've played younger players like Danny Ryan and Jane Claney that were very good when we played them last year, so I think they would be a serious contenders this year, because they've a lot of pace up front. So looking at the Intermediate Championship, we have Borderlan, obviously the Junior A County Champions from last year. We have Bursley, got to the Intermediate County Semi-Final last year, beaten by a pint. Care, um, always plenty of good players in Care. They're a dual club, as you know, and probably not as, as strong as they were the last few years with Ashley Maloney injured, Ashley McCarthy obviously in Australia. But to sit up the likes of Roisin Howard, um, Kilowan McDonough's again, uh, got to the Semi-Final last year, a great player, the likes of Laura Shinners. And they have Mary Walsh there, plenty of talent. Uh, Newport, Ballinhinch. Newport actually got to the league final. I know, Claudia, you probably weren't involved in the league yeah. final because you were with Tip, but um, Newport, you know, they did well enough in the league final against Borland. They this did, year. yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a battle of a match, to be honest. Now, they were two fairly well even teams on the day. I was there watching it, but um, the likes of Emma Flanagan, she played very well. Like they are very strong all over the fields. Yeah. And they're one that I would worry going into the championship to play against because I think on the day and if everything is going right for them, they are a serious outfit like. Yeah, they missed out in the top four place last year, so I'd imagine that would be their target this year. You know, and they have likes of um Sean, the junior panel this year, Saoirse, Saoirse McGrath, yeah, yeah. she's a very good free taker as well, she can score free to many, so I think that's one thing if we're playing against them, is to try and keep the free count down. Yeah, and Grace O'Toole the then was on tip senior panel yeah. as well, so plenty of talent in Newport there, but, and then we have Tumi Vara, I nearly forgot about Tumi Vara, Tumi Vara obviously coming down from senior, they were senior the last few years, and look to come back down intermediate, and they will be intermediate this year, you know, got a few heavy beatings in senior the last few years, but do you might know a bit more a bit about Tomb, I suppose, playing them last year? Like, I, I actually feel sorry for them last year, we'll say, because they played so well, we'll say, to come up from the junior, then in, then the intermediate. And then I thought last year when they lost a few players, that I suppose the team kind of fell apart a bit and there was players missing. They were down maybe, was it six or seven of core certain players, yeah. I think, last year. And, it, it, you know, they kind of got a bit hard done by and they got... Uh, a few trimmings in the in championship last year, which didn't help them, you know, confidence wise, and I, yeah. I presume, you know, even the girls' confidence in the camp like and stuff. But um, I don't think it's any harm for them to play an intermediate this year. They have, you know, they have great players there, and they're doing great work. Junior as well. I, I know there's a few girls gone back playing junior as well that will only help build their whole squad. Like so, I'd love, you know, you'd, you'd love to see them doing well again because they're. You know, in fairness, they've always been there, thereabouts, and yeah. it's hard so to see the team going down. It's kind of gas, there. really, the intermediate championship. You have a team like Borland coming up from Junior A, yeah. that could easily win it. You have a team like Tumi Vara coming down from Cena, could mm. easily win it. Or else you have anyone else in the middle. I think it's going to be a really good uh, FBD Insurance intermediate championship this year. Really wide open. I suppose Shannon Rovers having... Um, 
gotten beaten the last two finals in a row will be favourites. Um, and Quiva, just looking back on your final against him, I thought Gillian uh, McKenna went off after nine minutes injured. Like she's a midfielder again, something we really don't want to happen in the county final. A key player going off, mid, uh, going off injured, and they were probably on top at that stage when she went off injured. But the difference I've seen is really, um, and we were talking about this before Handy as well. Just you know the different scores. So uh, mm-hmm. Shannon Rovers were so reliant on Eve Lockney to score. I think she scored one three out of two six. Um, that day, and just look, looking back on the report here, and um, while Naka Villa had some impressive um, amount of scores here, so you had likes of um, Emer Heffernan scored 2 4, Arena scored 1 4, Quiva yourself got 4 points, Emer Gleason and Marine both got a goal, and Ellen Brown got 2 points. But on the other side, Shannon Rovers, like I said, Eve McLaughlin got. Um, Sorry, she got 2-6 out of their score. They, was, they scored 3-6 altogether. She, she scored 2 6 one, three from Freeze, I meant to say. And then Paula Hannigan got a goal. So they're going to need more score, more forward score, really, if they're going to win an intermediate title this year. Yeah, definitely. But I think they do have the potential for like the Laura Lanana and Celine Guinan up front. And obviously, Julian McKenna was a massive loss because in the group stage, she was hopping over points from midfield. So, like, they do have good scorers and they have. More under 16s, like every time you look at finals, their shining rovers seem to be in about underage sometimes. So there is players coming up that can score for them, and I think they'd be massive. And I suppose with Owen and his pockets, they're falling down on top of their players that can score. Yeah. So if they can keep that, mm-hmm. get the right players on the ball, they're going to go over. Yeah, so definitely, like you said there, they have young players coming up. They're going to be a year older this year. I mean, the likes of Emer Folkley, Celine Guy, and Eve Franks, Emma Darcy, and Francis Boulder were all on the Tipperary minor panel this year. Um, as well as, I think they had um, some players on the under-16 panel. Maeve Cahalan was on it there. Um, so when you have players like that coming through, every year playing adults, they're going to be bringing them on and bringing them on further. So, again, I'm probably not... When McCarthy, I think, are really hot favourites for the Junior B, Shannon Rovers probably not as favourites for the Intermediate despite getting to find Ash because it's just so competitive. Mm-hmm. With Borland coming up, Tim Barra going down, Newport getting to the league final, Killer One, Boris Lee would probably feel hard done by the day they get to the county final last year. So I'm going to put the, the gun to you now, Quiva, and say, first of all, who do you think, what top four teams do you think would get to that Intermediate? Um, Semi final, and don't worry about insulting Fiona. <laughs> no pressure now. Sure. <laughs> She'll prefer if you don't mention Borland, probably come in there in the long grass. But we're looking at the top Borland, Dwella, Bursley, Care, Killer One, Newport, Shannon Rovers, and Toome. Can you, can you give us who you think would make the top four based on what you saw last year, maybe, I suppose, and what you know of Borland and Toome you are, maybe? I suppose you have to put Shannon Rovers up there and Killer One based on their semi final performance. I suppose Newport with the hope and to go one better from last year. They were missing Grace O2 last year and I think they just missed out in the semi-final spot. And then I suppose Borland did beat us two years ago, so look, they have the players like they obviously have Claude and Sarah and they have a lot of young group players, so I put Borland in there as well. So now, that's that's Quiva's top four. We'll go one further and, and we'll have to call a winner now. Who do you think will win it? Just for those the betting people out there. <laughs> I suppose. If Kilmarnock can bring that semi-final performance that they brought last year, they could definitely, I think, win it. Their core play was on really like, and it was just, they were very good all round, I thought, and very balanced. Okay, so you heard it here first. Cueva McCarthy is tipping Kilmarnock McDonald's to be the Intermediate County Champions this year. Celine, you're sticking with McCarthy Boris for the Junior B? Um, yeah, <laughs> or Gurkha, who based their performance in the semi-final against us last year. Definitely, either one of those. Perfect. Right, we'll move over to the to the other junior A and the senior championship. Uh, Dave, just looking at the senior first of all, you know, drum an inch, I suppose going for four in a row. Mm-hmm. Is it a case of who's gonna stop them or is it an open again this year or what do you think? Um well obviously I'd love to think it was the case of who's gonna stop us, yeah, but um I don't know, like it look when you look at the championship any year, it's, it's never plain sailing. And Carty, even in the league this year, brought us to a second day, and even that went to extra time as well. Um, yeah, that was amazing. So, two, yeah, it was two brilliant. Matches, league final, very really exciting, good. Yeah. And even the, the, when I, I was actually looking just over match reports, I would say for this from the league, 
and Drum and Anik Harty, their scorers. Uh, Drum have 19 points, no, sorry, 19 goals, 61 points scorers in the league, and Anik Harty have 17 goals and, and 83 points. That they're way above all the rest of the teams within the league. Now I know the league you can't judge on because Thurs and Cashel weren't in the league, and Knockaville and Burgess both conceded games within the league as well. So you can't judge on on it, but still it's a good foundation coming into a championship with the two with Drum and Anik Harty playing that well as well, you'd have to see them as the top two teams within it. Um, I think when the league, when you're, when you're without county players, yeah. it's all about the, yeah. the strength and depth and like the drum have a senior and yeah. a junior A team, so they're always able to put out a strong team in the league and a carefully similar, big, yeah. big numbers there. And I suppose sometimes it's an advantage not to have as many county players as well that you can, you know. Well, at least you see who's on the panel, like who do you have and, and you know, you get a chance to play him in different places and kind of run your whole panel at one goal, like whereas when it hits the championship you kind of set in on those, the set 15 you have or the set 20 players you have or whatever. So yeah, I suppose we're very lucky with the, the depth we have within our senior and junior teams that makes us that bit stronger I suppose and, and we were able to build on that for the last few years. Uh, for that reason alone I think if it is to go four in a row, like you know it's, it's, it's a big thing to say like but if we did do it I think it would be for the depth of the panel we have and also maybe a small bit of felt like unfinished business within Munster and, and beyond with that as well. So um, I know it's a, a fairly sweeping statement this early in the championship, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's, you'd, you'd have to feel that we're strong enough to go a bit, you know, to I suppose to go to, for the four in a row this year. But in saying that, I wouldn't... Uh, bet against Anna Carter or Clonalty to, to run drum close this year. Yeah, like there was very little in the county final last year. Like yeah. if you think about it, caught the van, Quiva work, really yeah. pulled off a great save, we caught the van penalty. If that had gone in, I think if Keith, they had gone up, they were if they had gone in, they were up um, leading coming into the last few minutes. Yeah, so know, like so. absolutely nothing in it, and like. Cloney, Clodagh Quirk is back. Yeah. They were missing Clodagh Quirk last year. She's yeah. back this year. Um, we saw her with Tip the last mm. few games. Like She's going to be a huge addition. And there was a few county minors there, Dee, that you think would make a big addition to him as well. Yeah, I think um, Laura Laura Ryan there, Kate Farncombe, and even, I, I know not minor now, but Casey Hennessy, even when she gets the ball, the speed is just, it's frightening, you know, when she gets it and runs it back. Like, so... Um, all those combined together, I think, would make a huge difference. Claude is a huge addition back to any club. Yeah. Do you know, and it's it's great for for Tip as well to see her back, and um, not great when you're on the other side of her, but <laughs> it's, yeah. it is great to see her back. Like, but again, like we were saying earlier, I think Claude needs like they, they rely so much on Caught to score um, up front as well, and I think they need to see those scores dispersed across their forwards rather than and even coming through midfield and coming up along. So. If they do that, they're they're a real threat. Whereas I think Anna Carthy kind of, I feel that, that they kind of have that a bit more kind of broad scorers within it. And even um, Siobhan O'Neill, their centre forward, sure, like you know, she's a powerhouse there, and she's on freeze as well, and she's never too far off missing them. So yeah. it's you know it's between I I think either of those like are are very hard teams to beat, and when you come down to play them, it's never an easy game against either of them. Yes, yeah, so like we're saying there in the county final last year, Drummond Inch had Eamon McGrath six points, Joanne Ryan had a goal and a point, Miriam had a goal, Anne had a one one, Dee had a point herself. While Clonanti, you know, like you said, relying on caught nine points, seven from freeze, and Casey Hennessy then with a goal and a point. So need to get more forwards on the scoreboard, um and you know, like Eamon Burke, um yeah. Do you know, as mentioned, Kate Fernhoe and Lorna Ryan are very good minors this year, but I suppose Lorna being the backs, Kate maybe could be in the forwards or in midfield. But they definitely have the talent. They, you know, they have the hurt from the last two years, and I think they'll be very close again this year. But Anna Carty, I was very impressed with them in the league final yeah. as well. Um, like Sienna Walsh, the you know all the Heffernans, there's so many of them. But one player stood out for me was Orla O'Brien. I think you were impressed with her as well. Yeah, I think she's very good. She's. Um, playing midfielder for them and just seems to be very strong going forward as well and, and she was just when she gets the ball like she's, minors this year as well. yeah really she's, she's, she's just a strong player like but I, I think Anna Carthy to be honest like they've done so much work throughout the years with underage and it's definitely shown now coming up along 
So I think actually Siobhan O'Neill I think is heavily involved with the underage and she's driving it on a lot like and it's coming bringing players up to senior level which you know it's great to see for yeah. them and even with their, their minor team yeah they have four or five players on that as well that um, are, are beginning to shine for them at club and county. Yeah so. just with the tip minor sister it was Cora Heffernan, Ordo O'Brien, Sean Heffernan and Jennifer Heffernan then obviously like Zalia Heffernan would have played with tip yeah. juniors before and um, Sienna Walsh was on tip seniors before, Siobhan and Eel. So huge challenge, huge um, strength and depth and you know, be serious contenders there this year for the for the senior championship. So looking at the other teams then in senior, so Nakavilla obviously up from intermediate now. I was not just saying this now to hear Cleva, but fierce impressed with Nakavilla last year. I thought they were brilliant uh, against Gold here in the Munster Intermediate final. Um, and I was watching that last year I said they would be a serious team up senior, but Cueva, you're Obviously injured, which are cruciate, and you know a huge loss, you know, as a tip senior player. But um, still plenty of talent there, a mixture of you and old, and and you some more experience. I don't think there's any old really um, on your team. But um, like Seymour Heffern and Marina Friday, like all going well, all training well, all training well. Yeah, training is going well. Like the girls have really come on. I suppose again this year, but I suppose I'd be most impressed with the younger ones again, the likes of Sarah or Ryan or Ellen Brown. Like, Stepped up this year, especially in the league, like they were driving us on. And then there's under 16, Jesse Collins, Jade Collins, and Millie Kelly, like just having those girls even around, it's unreal. Like they just, the talent that they bring. So, like, if it's not now, we'll see them in a few years playing senior definitely. So, it's just brilliant. Great stuff. And I suppose then looking at the senior championship group one, it's Nakavilla, Dunsky, Kickhams, Silver Mines, Burgess, Duhara, Turles, and Cashel. And the other group then we have Drummond and Shanina and Eckhart and Clonty. Um, D, I suppose from playing teams last year, like Silver Mines always, mm. they're, they're never too far off. No, they're not. They even, always give a really tough game. Even in the league last year, you know, they were, they were very good. Like they always have, they have their core kind of players up the middle that are very strong. And then they have players on the side that are able to feed off that. And it makes them very, very hard to beat. They're always a very strong physical team as well. But they won't be... They won't be far off it either. Um, they look to try and get out of that group, you know. Um, there's quarterfinals this year and semi-finals, so they'll be trying to get out of that group. Burgess to Harrod, like it's a tough group though. Burgess to Harrod, yeah. like obviously for years were the top team, the yeah. standard bearers, but you know probably may not have the strength and depth in the panel now as other years. And they don't. But in saying that, well, from us, from our perspective, we never wrote off Burgess because you can't like. They have players there that even Quiva and Kier de Mar with Tip Seniors this year, Jenny Grace there, they have um, Kier McHugh as well with the intermediates uh, or the junior, sorry. But like they're all fierce, strong players to have at club level. And I think if they're all on song, it's very, very hard to beat them. Um, I know they're missing um, Tara Kendi's and she, I think Tara's not there this year, but um, Amy, you know, Kendi is, is unbelievable as well when she gets the ball. So any of those players, if they're on song, they're impossible to beat. But in saying that, um, they have kind of slipped back a good bit and it's hard to see them get out of a group where Nakavilla are, are beginning to fly it. Um, Thurless as well have a lot of county players across various different ages and Cashel as well have got to the semi-final uh, last year, if not the year before as well. So they're very strong as well. That group is is actually kind of evenly balanced when you look across it. Yeah, so like Turles, I know, um, probably were just very disappointed with their game against Drum last year, but then they turned yeah. around and very unlucky not to beat Cashel, who again ran Drum close in the semi-final. Yeah. So, but I think I suppose the big thing for Turles would be Karen Kendi, you know, she'd been out injured all year, she wasn't available for, for tip, and um, hopefully she's, ba you know, she's back. Well, we'll but she, but the club. match practice though, that's the only thing, like she was out and yeah. other years she had tip and stuff behind her like with matches and, and I suppose game time underneath her whereas when you come into a senior championship like that and, and they're coming to get fast, taking fast at you uh, I think that could be a disadvantage for her in saying that I'd love to have her on our team you know yeah. she's a super player like but, but they have, they, I, I don't know so they have a lot of turtles players in the tip junior panel this year and like, yeah. that's some experience and some training yeah exactly mm. like because we had hard matches all year between the league and championship and them girls were key girls like on the day and I think from the start of the year to the end of the championship the likes of Eva Butler and them they just came on leaps and bounds and they were key players towards the end of the championship. 
Yeah, yeah, the likes of Eve McCormick as well. Yeah. Um, Eva Butler, Katie McCormick. Um, Katie being good for him, and she's just a serious leader. Like she was the one person at training day after day that was driving it on for us, and I'm mm. sure she'd be doing that for Sarah's as well. Yeah, and absolutely. When you have yeah. a goalie like Kira that, Kira Cummins as well. Yeah. yeah. So. Kira you know, Cummins, yeah. Very good players, and they have some county minors like say, Eva Dwyer and all them as well, and the county minors. So. You know, they you know, a second year up up senior as well, they'll mm. you know, they'll be happy enough with how they went last year, but another year up senior will bring them on um so so that would be interesting. And they had the Monster Championship go. last year as well to to kinda put under their belt as well, so yeah. That'll all add to it. All experience again. Absolutely, um yeah. then Cashel then, like you said, serious talent again, looking at the county junior panel again, so they had like uh Mayville Ryan, Amy yeah. Cross, you know, serious players mm. and I know Sir Ryan and Cream Blair were in America and they're probably still there, but you know, they'll, they'll be home shortly. Mm-hmm. And like Cashel, I just think, you know, they're probably unlucky, though, obviously, with players with other sports with Orla away and Queen Purdue with hockey. I really think if they had all the players yeah. that they had that won up along when they won the Junior B and Junior A come up along, that they, they would be in the senior final by now. But I suppose they have never had all those players together at the same time since. But do you know, they'll give any team a, a right mm-hmm. raffle this year. They're, they're just so young and fit like and I think yeah. do you know they, like when they get the ball they run and that's terrifying for teams like do you know when when you've players that are that young and fast and do you know the Dwyers obviously when they get the ball as well they're unstoppable with it so Grace like Maloney it was with yeah, yeah Grace Maloney she, she's just she's really starting to kick off now and make a name for herself yeah. she's just she's playing serious stuff at the moment and the two I'm just looking there at the tip minor panel this year they had uh Grace Maloney, Ella O'Dwyer, Anna Fatty, Lily, Lily Fatty and Chloe Coleman. When you have that kind of numbers on a tip minor panel that mm. we're very lucky not to get to an all Ireland final this year, you know, lost to Cork in the semi-final, but when you, you know, that's just well something that Drum haven't had the last few years is county minors and county under 16s and, you know, all these clubs are coming up, you know, biting at their heels yeah. and, you know, I, I, I think that Cashel uh, panel will be very strong this year again, again, have a second team as well, it's always a good sign. But uh, just looking at the second group there, then the and we'll, we'll we'll leave you alone then before we come back to it to give your predictions. <laughs> but uh, Drummond Inch, obviously Nina and Carty Clonanti. So look, Nina, you know again some younger players coming through and likes Grace O'Brien, I suppose their key player Caroline Brown. But you know struggled last year, I suppose the last few years really since they've come up from intermediate. They they seem to never kick off on senior when since since they come up to the senior ranks I suppose they'd never drove it on from there they they seem to stay with teams for so long and then they fall away and I'm not sure really what's the reason behind it because they seem to have a good few core players but they don't seem to I suppose gel as well on the day maybe I, I'm not sure but I like looking at that group between the four of them I'd say they probably would be. Um, it's a I'd, tough group to yeah, with Yeah, it's a hard one to get out yeah. of there now with, with with those four teams in it. Okay, we'll, leave you, we'll let you think about now Thanks. before I say who you think was going to win out the, the, the county final this year. And we'll, we'll have a look at the Junior A uh, Championship um, just scrolling down here to the teams in the Junior A. I think the Junior A is brilliant every year. It's so close, um, not between the teams. Uh, Holy Cross... Uh, group 1, Holy Cross, Ballycal, uh, Templemore, Drummond Inch, St. Risha's, Feathered, uh, Moneygall. Group 2 then we have Laura, Ballina, Killadangan and Brian Bruce. So, uh, Claude, I'm just going to ask you to look ahead to this Junior A Championship. You know, you'd be familiar with a lot of those teams last year. Obviously, Moneygall got to the county final. Would you? Would they be favourites for this year, do you think? Yeah, I suppose um, Moneygall... Um they have the players to win the county final, I suppose, the likes of Mary Ryan, Mary Tien, and they're very strong, sent, like they have a very strong core to their team. Yeah. And I suppose if they're on form, they're very hard to beat, and they're just, le- they have leaders all over the field, and they'd be hoping to push on this year now and win it, I suppose, from getting to the final last year and just losing out um, by a few points, I suppose. So they'll be hoping to kick on and win it this year. Yeah, they had some Im- impressive players last year, like you, me- like you mentioned, Mary Ryan and all that. But also, um, what you call Kira Maher and Dwina Keane, I thought were very good in the county final. Um, Marie Teen is a, is a serious player. You know, there's a few she's girls strong. obviously from Moneygall playing with Offaly. Um, Katrina Duggan, I think she scored seven points last in the county final last year with Freeze and from play. So, you know, I think they were happy enough with their, with their championship last year getting to the final because they have a lot of young players and 
they look to push on again this year, but the junior A is so competitive. We had Holy Cross and uh, Kiladangan in the league final, went to extra time, yeah. Kiladangan won it in the end. By a goal, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, they're obviously playing good stuff this year. Drum and Inch, they would be... Would they be always there thereabouts with their junior A team as well? I suppose I think a lot of it depends if girls are used then yeah. uh, with the senior and stuff. Yeah, I suppose last year lost out to Money Gall and it was a brilliant match over in Bursleen. It could have went either way. I think it came down to was it the last puck of the ball or something? There was a goal at the end, but other than that, did they, you know, I have to say it was a strong junior team last year, so I'd be hoping to be the same this year again. And they'd be looking to try to get to a semi final. Yeah. Um, other teams you played last year, Borland, or that Borland played last year, that you think could have a big say this year? Um, I suppose Holy Cross. Um, I suppose we played them every year now as well when we've been up in Junior A, and it kind of has always differed where we won by a point, they won by a point, and it's always like they're all they're never gone away, you know. And they've the likes of Claire Sage from Lorna Dwyer, like they've just massive players. And on the day you never know where they're going to play these players, like. Won't, one year Claire Sacrum is full forward from the next she sent her back. Like they just okay. they're not afraid to change things up, I suppose. Yeah. And they could be ones to look out for in the championship this year. I think they've been stuck in junior A for long enough now, they'll be dying to get out of there. They had May Ryan on the County Minor panel this year and I know they had some count under sixteens, whether they'll fi- feature yeah. on their on their adult team. We'll wait and see. But um other other teams there just looking at it there, um Temple Moore, they won the junior B if you, I think maybe two years ago. Like the Ruth Butler, you know, yeah, they're not sure young girls. Them last year. No, uh, we haven't played uh, Temple Moore now since they came up, but uh, from looking at their games and stuff, they've um, a few forwards that are well able to score, and they're a very young side, so I'm sure they'll be building on their panel and hoping to get out of the junior A as well soon enough. But I think Brian Brews are a team that are looking very strong. We played them last year in the group game and it was the hardest match we had all year. Like they're very physical okay. and I suppose once once you're getting on the ball when you're playing against them there is three or four of them in on top of you. Like they're very good and I think once they can just get a few more forwards on the scoring board, um, they'll be away in a hack. Like they're very strong. Right. And there was a couple of Brian Broom players uh, involved with you this year with Tip as well. Yeah, um, uh, Alison O'Mahony and Mary Barrett. Yeah. Two very young girls and they just brought speed and they were two girls who I suppose didn't get a look in on match day but were so determined like they were the they've just they've got great passion for Camogie and I'm and sure like, I'd imagine if any of the other clubs are playing against Brian Bruce they're players that need to be watched exactly yeah because they're just so fast like the two of them and and what about Killa Dang and then would you how do you think they'll go this um, year? I suppose like they went, they won the league final, so obviously like they're going well and stuff in training, and did won that without Sinead Maher, who is just mm. a serious player. Like, yeah. and to have her back for the championship now, it will only drive them on even more. So they'll definitely want to watch as well for the final. Like I suppose the Junior A championship, we just never know how it's going to go. Like, yeah, it's really, it's really competitive. It's the last so few competitive. Years. Like, yeah. I suppose there's no team, you know, maybe Laura might. <laughs> Sneak in there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you want that? The one, the one to. That's something that's left no, no. in the past now. <laughs> Junior A, why not stay going? Yeah, but it does make a difference, obviously, yeah, when you win a county final. I'm sure there's a buzz. I know you had yeah. your um, presentation, your medal thing, and yeah. dinner dance. Yeah. I'm sure all the buzz Yeah, was like, like, it wasn't like. Yeah, it was just unreal. But, um, like, when you have Claude McIntyre as well. Clona McIntyre, yeah, and we have like there's a lot of other players as well. We have um, Katie Kennedy, there's a lot of younger girls, we've younger girls come on this year now, Katie Woodin, um, Lily Sherlock. So it's nice to see younger girls come yeah. up and like serious forwards as well. We have um, Elaine Hogan and um, sure, we have Ronnie Hoffback from injury this year. She still she did her booty there two years ago. So we have her back, which is great, and Murray Kennedy as well. Um, also had knee trouble, but she's back too. So, like, it's good to see those girls back. You know, yeah. those big, big, big boots. But um, yeah, hopefully we might sort of give it, give it that, a go. I end up that group too. There, but Banna there as well. I suppose I haven't seen Banna play myself in the last few years. But I know the baby Ward. She was on the floor. Back to you again. The tip <laughs> her panel. So I think was she injured though for somebody this year? Yeah, she went over on her ankle in a challenge match just before championships. So she missed the first few games, but she was back for the the last game. So she'll yeah. be fit so for. So she'd be the key player for Bell now. Yeah, she, she will be. Uh, they'll be looking to go to her for. 
I know Elaine she's, King is with them as well, but I don't know. Do you know she? Um, I, I know, know Elaine got married there two weeks ago now, so... Oh, did she? She might be still celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other than that, she's killing Elaine some corner uh, forward. A lot of <laughs> county medals with uh, birds to her, but obviously you got back playing with her own home club band now, so like, having to play with that yeah. kind of experience is mm. massive, and then mix it up with the likes of Amy Ward. So, um, Killa Dangan then... Um, we mentioned them as well, just Paula Kelly as well is a, a key player for them, yeah. she captains the team, Emily Marcy is with them as well, so they're going to be serious. So again, the Junior A, uh, I'll let you have a think about it for a minute, Claudia, before, before I ask you to I've given everyone it. a chance. <laughs> <laughs> before I ask you to predict it, we'll go back to, to D there with the Senior Championship, I suppose, you know, it is the the big one, I suppose, the Senior mm. Championship, it's the one um, a lot of people will be really interested in. Um, Seeing can Anna Carty, like Anna Carty has so much potential. Anna Carty and Anna are really are two clubs that were yeah. winning and contesting A finals all the way up along for years. I really think it's, I won't say now or never for Anna Carty, but it's time for them to make the break, breakthrough. And I, I genuinely would be nervous of Anna Carty. I think they're, like even the league final this year, I, I just thought they were super. Like yeah. throughout the whole thing, the, the whole two matches and even pushing it to extra time, they were very unlucky. And I think a lot of extra time just came down to fatigue in the end because I think it was the last 10 minutes of extra time there was no score. Do you know, as in there was, like the ball was going up and down but everyone was just wrecked and, and just after the two games and I suppose within two weeks in a row. But they are a very, very strong side that definitely won't be pushed out of the way too easy. Yeah, I suppose the only thing in Trump's favour there, like as good as Anna Carty were in the league final, I know they were missing a few, I suppose the calibre mm-hmm. of players the drum were missing, like they've Quiva Burke to come back into that, Eamon McGrath, Eve McGrath, yeah. Eve Tracy, um Ray Devson were all tied up with county. So Yeah, and Raid was injured a lot of last year as well and even was only still coming right to start of the year, so she's a great addition to have back and seems to be going very well, like so hopefully that'll stay going. Yeah, the but then drum are down a few players as well, like yourself, a few more in joining your club. Five, I think yeah, <laughs> the wrong was, club to be joining. I think there's five. <laughs> is there five at the moment or something like that at the minute? That yeah, but that's what well, that gives you a chance. And yeah, there's a lot of girls there only itching to to yeah, grab a spot and that's starting fifteen. Look, well, there's I, I think that's is a four or five off the starting, but like in saying that, if there was a sub made for any of us in the morning, like or any of us in any game. It, you you very you notice very little difference like the you know the players that are on the sideline are pushing so hard, um it within training and matches as well and it's great that's why, like I it it I know I was only kind of joking sounding really cocky on, but it's it, like I do think that I, I do think drum enough drum will be strong enough to push it over, um to get to get another county final this year but. It, it definitely won't be easy with Clonty and Anna Carty uh, biting at heels there and even with the way the championship goes and, and the first few matches are so important, if you meet Anna Carty or Clonty in their home grounds, they're, they're extremely hard to get over and they're all in, in the same group as Rome. So, so who would you think would be the top four teams that will get to a, a senior camp semi-final this year? Out of the two groups. Well, yeah. just, yeah, because I'm not sure how the parents would go with quarterfinals and things like that. So just who would you think... Based on last year, maybe what you know of Nakavilla, who do you think are the top four teams I, I, in Tipperary? I think the top senior? four are Drum, and Carty, Clonolty, and um, no bias now against Burgess Rotten, but I think Cash will probably get out of that group as well. Um, I just think that they're, they're I don't know, I think Cash can be dangerous enough. Yeah. Like even with us in the semi So you're looking at the same four teams that got to last year's kind yeah, of semi Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. Okay. We even might have something to say about that now over in Aquavilla. But Sorry, look, Quiva. it really is going to be very, very... Well, you're injured, Quiva, so... Yeah. Like, you know. But it really is going to be a very close uh, championship again. Like, And I think whoever wins that senior county final will really earn it. And I suppose you can say that across all the, the grades, and that's what's so brilliant about the, the insurance championship. So, Claude, back over to you. So, have you thought who you think will top four team... We'll start off with top four. The junior A top four teams that you think will get to... Uh, a junior A, um, well actually, so the groups is, because this is straight semi-finals, um, now I think there is talks of quarter-finals, but the moment, uh, as we're recording this, it's straight semi-finals, so, <laughs> Holy Cross, Temple Moor, Drummond and St. Risha is a money goal, if there was two teams to come out of that group, who would you pick? I'm going to go with uh, Holy Cross and Money Goal. She didn't even have to think Sorry. about it. Straight in there, with Holy Cross <laughs> and Money Goal, that's fair enough, and then in the other group, Laura, Balana, Killadangan and Brian Bruce. Um, 
Kilidangan and Brain Bruce. So that's the top four, and, and we want to predict uh, winners. Who do you think will win the county final? Um, I'm going to play it safe and go Kilidangan. Kilidangan. They won the, just because they won the league. Just go. <laughs> they won the league. They're the foreign team coming into the championship, yeah. and they're, they're Claude's predictions to win the county final this year. Um, just like you said, we're going to do the Junior B2 later on. We'll have someone on from Silver Mines. But um, I know, Claudia, you have a Junior B2 team this year. It's the first time ever, I think, to have a second team. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it got set up there a couple of weeks ago and they've been playing challenge matches the last few weeks. And I think it's very good for the younger girls coming up because um, the underage system in Borland is flying at the moment. Yeah. They're just winning county final after county final. I think we need a second team because... You know the jump from under sixteen up to intermediate. It's, it is a big jump, like for these yeah. younger girls, and ha to have that team in the middle for them. And like we all train together, um, which is brilliant because you have numbers at training. You know, and we're we twenty five to thirty at training every night, and it's it's fantastic. Like, and I suppose for the younger girls to play these junior matches now, it'll be brilliant for them to bring them on even more. So the FPD Insurance Adult Championship kicks off on the weekend of the twentieth of August. So there's going to be loads of games to go to. So we'll just go through the senior championship there. Um, kicks off the 20th of August. First round is Nakavilla, Dunsky, Kickens versus Burgess, Tohara. Turles Arsons versus Cashkin, Cormix. And um, Silver Mines have a bye. And then in group two, we have Drummond Inch versus Nina, Erog, and Anna Carty um, versus Clonoti, Rossmore. So that's the senior championship. They all begin on the 20th of August. And they're all six o'clock games, Saturday evening games. Then the Intermediate Championship um, begins also on 20th of August, 6pm games again on a Saturday evening. Um, just get those fixtures there. We have, like I said, it's seven, seven uh, teams in that, so loads of games. So 20th of August, Borland will take on Bursley, Care play Killer One, Newport Band and Minch take on Shannon Rovers, and Timmy Barra have a bye. Um, then the first round games in the Junior Eight Championship is 20th of August. St. Rich's, um, uh, St. Rich's Feather to take on Drum, Templemore against Money Gall and Money Cross have a bye and then in Group 2, uh, Lara take on Balna and Kildangan versus Brian Bruce. And then um, the Junior B Championship we have Carrick Swans take on Cash. these are Sunday games on the 21st. Gertnahu and Glengu take on McCarkey and Portro have a bye and in group two we have Ballingary taking on Mile Rovers and Silver Mines playing um, St. Cronin's. At this year's launch of the FPD Insurance Adult Championships I caught up with some of the players and to get their thoughts about the upcoming championship. I'm joined now I suppose uh, the girl doesn't need any introduction caught the van captain of Clonty Rossmore caught uh, at the FPD club championship launch again it's the second year of a three-year deal with FPD and um, how important is it that Tipperary Camogie have a you know a progressive and established company like FBD sponsoring the club championship. Oh look, it's it's brilliant to be here, and um, I think it's massive for for the Camogie to get such a, I suppose, a big name like FBD rolling in behind it, and we've reaped the rewards of it um, the last couple of years as well. You could see that the publicity it was given it online and and the streaming of matches and things was absolutely fantastic. So, um, and I suppose look, you have FBD Simple Stadium inside as well. So in terms of hurling and Camogie in Tipperary and and football, it's a big big brand, and and to think that they're behind the club championship is absolutely massive. And as a player point to view it's it's really encouraging to see um a tough season with tip uh Kosh, obviously and no doubt you'd love to be in yesterday's quarter finals um is it hard to turn around and go back playing with the club or is it great to have that distraction and just get stuck back into it or would you do you prefer taking a break or how does it worked out um i suppose look for me i can only really speak personally i love getting back stuck into the club it's something that um, we don't get an opportunity to do during the summer when we are representing Tipperary. You know, there's challenge matches and training that you just can't um, can't be part of, and 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 that's hard. But I suppose getting back into the club um, and like like you said, after a disappointing maybe Tipperary campaign, it is refreshing, and I suppose you get an extra confidence boost going back playing with your with your club and with girls that that you grow up with and live beside, and that. So I personally love it. Yes, I do take. Um, a week or, or or ten days or so, I suppose, just to uh, to to relax and 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 take a bit of a break from from it all between the inter county and the club season starting. But but I definitely try to get back up and running as quick as I can with it because it's something that I enjoy and I love. And like you said, it kind of gives you an extra kick on um, when the inter county season finishes. So to be. 
Uh, Clonty will definitely be one of the favourites for this year's championship. You have Clodagh back, great. She was missing last year from injury. Following tip minors this year, likes Kate Foran, Lorna Ryan. There's a great balance there in Clonty. And uh, how are you fencing your chances? Yeah, look, I suppose we've progressed well over the last couple of years. Um, and like you said, we, we were missing Clodagh there. Uh, and there's some great youth coming up through the team, you know. So it is it is very exciting, I suppose, to be involved with, with um, Clonty at the minute. And we have two teams. We, we have a junior and a senior team. And, and there's massive appetite for Camogie in the parish and in the club. And it's, it's really encouraging to see. I suppose, look, you're looking at the two groups um, at the senior level and you can't take any game for granted. Do you know, I know we have progressed the last couple of years. We still haven't got over the line, which is misfortunate and we'd be disappointed with that. But, but I think at the start of the year, everybody starts at the same base and, and you can't look past first round and trying to get out of the group is, is, going, to be our first ch- is, is going to be our first task and it's going to be a challenging one too, looking at who we have to face. Thanks very much, Cot. And joined by Murray Devson, captain of Drummond Inch Camogie Club. Murray, we're here at the FBD Championship launch. Uh, great morning here so far. Yeah, it's great. Uh, lovely weather for us. Um, you know, even seeing the amount of teams there in the minor championship, it's it's very good to see. Um, but it's exciting as well to see the clubs um, ahead of the championship, and I'm sure it's going to be a great one this year. And uh, you're captain of Drummond Inch. I'm sure that's a great honour for you. Yeah, it is. Um, look, at the end of the day, it's it's just I'm representing the girls, but. There's 15 of us on the team and there's going to be subs brought on as well, but I'm delighted as well that I'm able to represent the team. Um, but we've had a good few years now, and uh, the last three years, getting to the county final and progressing further. So we're hoping to build on that as well. We've a lot of things that we've left behind us, so we've a lot of motivation again this year. And going for a four in a row, it's been an amazing few years, as you said. Um, I, suppose, I suppose, is it... You know, does it get harder every year or is it kind of like maybe the monkey off to the back and they go out and play with confidence now that you have that county championship? Yeah, I think it's a strange one, you know. Um, we kind of started getting into our groove when COVID came and I think that kind of took the pressure away from us. There wasn't many people at matches and it probably allowed us to enjoy our camogie without the, the pressure, I suppose, of the two in the row and the three in the row. But this year now there probably is an added pressure. You know, we, we got to an All-Ireland semi and there's that expectation of us again now to get out of the county and, and to progress again into the Monster Championship. So it will be probably a lot more pressure on us this year. Um, you know, we've a lot of, I suppose, a lot of our team players now gone um, we've lost maybe two or three over the last few years um, having children and it's great but we've a lot of youth coming in um, a lot of energy as well so you know that confidence will come through with them in the group stages as well And just looking at the opposition this year obviously Clonty Ross Moore is supposed to be your main rivals the last few years Birds to Har looking very strong to Mahers back playing midfield for tip this year Nakavilla I was really impressed with them coming up like every team you know there's no easy game really in the senior championship No there's not and like the two groups this year like there's ourselves Clonty Anna Carty and Nina in one group you know that's, it's brilliant to get those kind of competitive matches in the round stages but then looking at the other group you don't know who's going to come out of it and I'm actually really excited to see those those teams um, performing uh, especially Nakavilla you know it's their first year up senior and I don't think anyone should take them for granted but it's it's great to, to have those teams coming up and pushing everyone on a bit more and Drum obviously have a junior A team this year as well um, most clubs now have second teams even some of the smaller clubs have a junior B and a junior B too just Camogie to Bray really is going from strength to strength and it's great to have a, a sponsor like FBD behind the championship isn't it? It is, it really is just to promote it and you know get more football at matches as well like Camogie is improving every year the skill and the work rate that the girls put in so I think it's, it is important that they, the support is there and having FBD behind us and promoting us this year I think will help that Thanks, Mered. Now, Thanks, looking Mary. ahead to the Intermediate Club Championship, um, a great championship last year, Mary, and I know you got to the semi-final, went to extra time, um, Nakavilla went on to win it, so you must be one of the favourites now for a championship this year. Uh, no team really is the favourite. Like I said, uh, Intermediate is a very competitive uh, competition. Um, all the teams are very level-headed, um, so look, we, we'll give it our best shot and we'll see how far we go. Like you said, it really is a, a tough competition. Um, there's one group, everyone plays everyone. Uh, you get plenty of games, is that a good thing? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh, you play every team and every time you go back there and play them second time, the, the, the game is not the same at all. It's completely different, so it's very good. Very beneficial to all players. 
And how is training been going for you this year? Um, yeah, look, COVID uh, gone, so numbers are kind of scarce. People are going on holidays and stuff like that, so everyone has a life. But look, training hard, it's getting, we're six weeks away from championship right now. And so next six weeks is hitting the ground running, basically, yeah. And uh, we have had a great morning here this morning with FBD um, launching the club championship here in the County Camogie Crowns in the RAG. Um, great crowd here again. And um, I suppose, would you feel last year FBD coming on as sponsor kind of gave the whole championship a lift and extra promotion? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great uh, company to have behind us, um, which is fantastic. And it, it promotes the Camogie completely. Um, all the girls out there smiling and having good crack there, so, so it's great to see. Perfect, thanks Being very much. joined now by Saoirse McGrath, captain Newport Ballon Hinch Intermediate Team. Saoirse, we're here in the County Camoy Grounds in the RAG uh, for the club launch. Uh, great to have FBD as sponsor in the club championship again this year. Yeah, yeah, it's good, good to be back now. <laughs> and looking forward to the championship? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the weather's great as well, so it's like perfect hurling weather. <laughs> exactly. Um, I suppose last year you didn't make the... It's one group, as we know, in the Intermediate Championship, so it's lots of games. Uh, top four get to semi-finals. I know you didn't get to a semi-final last year. Is that the aim this year, or are you thinking even further ahead and, and winning the Intermediate Championship? Um, yeah, I suppose you're always looking. I mean, the ultimate goal is to win it, like, so um, that's always what you're aiming for, so... Yeah, like last year didn't go to plan, but um, that doesn't rule us out for this year. Well, it was a really good championship last year. You know, there was teams beating each other and then turning around being beaten by teams. Do you know, there was no real, I suppose, t teams that dominated and won all their games. The semi-finals were really close. And one of them went to extra time and all that. So it's going to be really tight and you kind of have to hit the ground running into the championship. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, one of our biggest things from last year was that we kind of went well in the league and then we kind of had a bit of a lull after that and the break kind of broke our momentum, I suppose. So like we'll be looking to hit the ground running with this, this championship. And I know you're involved with Tiberi Juniors this year. Um, you know, maybe you're, you would love to have been in an all Ireland semi-final. Is it hard then to turn around and go back club train or do you like just getting that out of the system going straight back into club train? Um, it's I'm really looking forward to it actually like I'm kind of really driven to go back to the club and like yeah just hungry for it I think to go back to the club so. brilliant stuff thanks now for I'm joined by Holy Cross Bally Cal Junior A Captain Ashley Slattery Ashley we're here at the FBD Club Championship launch great morning here and great to see all the clubs represented oh it's ab absolutely brilliant like seeing all the girls out and stuff and it's just great to kick off championship now get ready for it and so, uh, looking ahead to the championship, you're in a group with Feather, Templemore, Money Gall, and Drum and Inch. A tough group, but I suppose there's no easy games in the Junior A championship. No, you never know how a match will go either. Like, you know, with different things and injuries and girls away and things. But I think we'll just give it a good crack again this year. We were kind of in hard luck last year, really. I thought, but I think we're just going to kick on again this year and do the best we can do, and hopefully we'll go that step ahead again. And I suppose, to fairness to Borland, they were probably a step ahead of everyone last year. They're gone now, they're up into me, so it's going to be a real cracking junior A championship. Oh, absolutely. Like, and even all the teams, like, it's not, it's not, you can't pick out any two, like, you know, so I think it's all very even. So it's just a case of putting the head down between now and August and just getting the, the time done in the field. And um, I think you got to the league final, didn't you, against Killadangan? Uh, we did, yeah. 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 So I suppose, did you take a break after that now before championship or how have you been training through since? Oh, no, we took a bit of a break, to be honest. We were like, we lost that an extra time. It was, a, it was an absolute killer, to be honest. But we picked ourselves up again and we're ready to go. We're back training the last few weeks and it's just great to have everyone out again and everyone's just raring to go for championship. Like, Brilliant stuff. Best of luck and thanks very much. Girls, great morning here and that's great buzz about the championship. Yeah, it's brilliant to be up now to represent our club and meet everyone who's in the championship with us now and to take the pictures and get out and get in form for a championship. And did you find last year with FBD sponsoring that um, I suppose it gave either, even a bigger interest in promotion of the championship? Yeah, it was brilliant now. It gave everyone a boost and it really kind of promoted Camogie, the Camogie Association and just really kind of boosted everyone and ma made a greater name for the whole championship itself. And we're just talking about the Junior A Championship earlier. It's a really competitive championship. Um, I suppose last year, probably, you know, Borderland, well, were probably a step ahead of everyone. They've gone up to Intermediate. They're going to have a right crack Intermediate. But it really opens up the Junior A Championship and it's going to be a really, really good championship. Yeah, it's brilliant. Now, we just went up to Junior A ourselves there last year and we actually won the, the league. So it was actually a brilliant boost for us now and it was a great challenge for us. So this year we're really going for it now and having a good 
um, try at it and see how far we'll get and hope for the best anyway. Yeah, so last year was your first year in junior A. Uh, you're, you're established now. You're going to, as you said, go really go for it this year. Um, you know, Brian Bruce is a really strong club, coming really good in Camogie and Tipperary. A lot of good underage players, a lot of success. But I suppose uh, a w success at junior A championship will really crown you. Oh, it'll be brilliant and it will give everyone in the whole club a, a great boost now because all through my age groups we've never won anything so it oh, should be brilliant for us and it should give the underage um, a great boost and drive the club on now. And you're in a group there, I see with Laura who are just up from Junior B, um, Killadangan and Ballina, so no easy games and a, a couple of long trips for you as well. Yeah, definitely now, but it'll be worth it for a good challenge now. We're always fighting for a good challenge and um, no match will come easy to us, so we'll take it game by game and see how we get on anyway. Perfect, thanks Hello, very much. We're joined now by Anthony Moroni. Anthony is a selector with Silver Mines uh, senior team and their junior B team. He was also involved last year when Silver Mines captured the county junior B2 title. Uh, Anthony, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jerry, for inviting me. So, Anthony, I suppose we had... Other representatives on from last year's uh, winning teams just talking about looking back on their finals last year and, and giving their thoughts on who might win the competition this year. So how, you know, thinking back to your county final last year, um, obviously great joy and celebrations at, at the final whistle, but I suppose you got off to a great start against Cashel that day. Yeah, we, we kind of, the, the momentum of the game went with us in the first 15 minutes and then it kind of, it leveled out then for the second 15 minutes. We got a bit of a lead. We scored an early goal and stuff like that. So that kind of gave us a little bit of a foothold on the game. Interestingly enough, versus the semi-final, it was a lovely, fine, cool morning, but it was actually ideal, ideal condition for playing Camogie. Uh, whereas the semi-finals was in the muck and the, the rain over in, in uh, Drumband. But we say, then when, when the second half began, Cashel really got a run on us and they really started to uh, pose us problems and they were coming more and more back to us, into us. So we actually had to make a few changes. Um, they worked on another day, they don't work. Mm -hmm. And we countered uh, some of the hard running that they were doing. And I suppose then our older girls, um, their experience began to tell, tell because they started taking up positions where ball was dropping, whereas uh, Cashel's younger girls were running out of legs maybe in the last 15 minutes. So we then then got another goal which opened up the gap, and then I think we got a third goal in the in the game which really kind of killed it off then completely at the end. So yeah, it was a, a kind of a game of younger girls versus older girls for a period of time, and the older girls came out on top, the experienced girls. So uh, it was a nice one to win, um, and I see both of us are back, are up to junior B this year, which yeah. makes, which is fascinating to see the development between both teams versus last year yeah that's a very interesting point i suppose uh for a lot of the divisions we would have last year's finalists maybe as potential winners this year's yeah. and this year and favorites going into the competition but Kasha king cormacs have been shoved up to to junior b alongside uh silver mines this year and you know no doubt they'll go very well like you said they're a young team and uh there's lots of uh, development and growth there. But um, does that leave, I suppose, this year's competition wide open? We have six teams, Ballybacon, Tumivara, Shannon Rovers, Clone, Tirasmore, Anna Carty and Borland, Duella, with the all playing each other and the top four going into the semi-finals. Is it open season now that Cashel are gone? I suppose it is because ultimately the two semi-finalists last year with ourselves in Cashel were Clonauti and Tumivara. So... If you base it solely on that, you'd say, okay, they have the, they should be the ones to look out for. But I have a secret suspicion that um, Anna Carty and Borland could be the two. Um, Borland are kind of doing a lot of underage development and their 16s are going well and stuff like that. And Anna Carty 16s are going well and they have good, both clubs have kind of a mix of girls involved in county teams. So if they are not on scene, their senior squads, then their junior B2s are going to be fairly strong and they'll have a bit of speed and uh, a good skill about them. So I suppose that's who the two I would be looking at uh, to see would will either of them get to the final and see can, can they win it. But they might, might maybe my two uh, dark horses for the junior B2. Obviously, I'd say Clonality probably would be the one that you would look at. They might have the best mix of all. But I think Borland and Ancarty might be the two that will come to the fore. 
Yeah, interesting, because Anna Carty won the league earlier this year. They had a very good win over Shannon Rovers in the league final, 14 points to 1-4. But like that, Anna Carty, you know, they have a senior team, so do Clonaunty. Yeah. Um, can't read too much into league. Chances are Anna Carty have lost some of those players since or will lose some of them players since. So it is hard to know how some of the second teams will go. Valley Bacon are the only actually team there that it's their first team. You know, they're a new club. Well, they're only 10 years old, so very new to adult scene. And I don't know if you ever played them last year, did you? No, we didn't play. We didn't play Valley Bacon at all in the adult division. But well, I would have came across them at the underage divisions. Like, well, no team that I would be directly involved with, but basically teams that my girls would have been playing on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like they're doing a good lot of good work down there. So I suppose the progression is to see how they can get on at adult level then. And can they retain all the girls that they have brought through for the last 10 years or so? So um, I reckon myself that they probably have a shout. Any first team will always have an advantage over a, a second team. But whether they have enough of an advantage because some of the girls then that will say that our second teams are training with senior panels, that always helps because it makes things faster and quicker. And games Is that and the way you would do it in Silver Mines? Would you all train together or...? Yes, uh, same management team overall, and they all train together. Listen, uh, for ladies, it seems to be uh, training schedules are very difficult to organize for ladies' teams because, okay, with nursing and various different professions that don't lend well to, uh, how, would you, how would you put it, organizing training sessions in evenings because of shift work and various yeah. different things like that. So um, it, wor it works for us. Um, it helped last year, definitely, because... The junior B girls were able to hurl a little bit swifter and faster than I would say if they were just training on their own. And numbers of training always helps because you can have kind of mini games amongst yourselves then as well. So it always, it always helps. What also helped us last year was when the senior girls got knocked out in their championship, uh, a good few of them continued to train okay. with us in order to help the, the junior B2 team. Okay, very good. Interesting points there. Um, just looking as well at Tumivara. Um, you know, I think correct me if I'm wrong. I think last year, I suppose they decided to enter a second team. Um, yeah. kind of see maybe a, a social and a, a team at first, and a lot of um maybe older players come out of retirement. Girls, I suppose they'd be my vintage that uh would have won county finals in, in back in two thousand and four. Likes of uh, Louise Young. Anna Woods, Lizzie Woods, Paula Ryan. And, you know, they may say they may have started off as a social thing and abandon a fitness thing, but, you know, competitive streaks don't, lo don't leave people. And, you know, they were very competitive in a lot of their games last year and I think would be a match for a lot of teams this year. Yeah, I'd agree, because interestingly enough, we played them in the round robin series. They actually gave us a bit of a... We didn't beat them by a whole pile. It was actually close enough. Um, whereas in the league... Uh, no, sorry. In the league, they actually ran us very close, but in the championship league format, uh, they suffered a few injuries in the game, so we kind of ran out easy winners. Okay. But if you look back to the actual league game that they played against us, and both both their teams were virtually identical to each other on on, on the days, um, it was it was telling how competitive they were. And yeah, the social aspect of it, I think, left them for the minute they crossed the white line. A lot of them, you know, you don't yeah. lose that competitive streak. At all, um, yeah, and it'd be interesting. I know you're 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 uh mentioned Borland well as a dark horse. Uh, I, I know there are Billy Ryan is one of their giant managers, he, he mightn't agree there. He's the, he's saying they're scraping a second team together and uh barely have the numbers. I know they didn't enter the league, but you know, they had they're doing great work in Borland and you know, even Shannon Rover as well. It's a great testament to the work that's going in there that they're able to feel a second team, yeah. and like you said, younger players, you know. A lot of times in this competition, it might come down to the more the experienced players versus the younger players, the pace, the fitness, the conditions. If, like you said, conditions, is it going to be a, a, a beautiful day or is it going to be later on in the year? It could be different conditions and a total different outcome. So I suppose getting the balance right um, on the teams, but also a big say would be if, if teams are lost to, to, to uh, their first teams as well, you know, players are lost to the first team. Yeah, I, I, like I suppose that could be a div, more of a difficulty this year for even for senior teams um, and all, all teams that have two teams is that the second team is going to suffer because 
even for ourselves, we have a couple of girls away in America at the moment, and they're not going to be back for the start of the senior championship, which means there's possibility that some girls that would ought be automatic starters on the second team are now going to uh, be on the senior team, senior squad. And maybe, unfortunately, if they start the first couple of games and these, we say, the other girls come back and they play the same way as they played before, they're probably going to dis, uh, displace them on the senior team. So them girls could lose a lot of game time then for the rest of the season. So it may be something County Board could maybe look at is that can you play in the first game because of the fact that it's it's operating during the holiday season as such, that um, could you allow two players to go, go back down to junior B2 if they don't ultimately end up playing senior for the rest of the year? It may be able to give a bit of flexibility to those teams that are struggling for a second team as well. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it's affecting a lot of the clubs out there. Um, so I just want to, suppose put the gun to your head now and, and and get you to, first of all, predict what four teams will make uh, the knockout stages, will make the semi-final. So, again, uh, it's Bally Bacon, Tumi Vara, Shannon Rovers, Clonty, Rossmore, Anna Carty and Borland Duella. So, which four do you think will, will, will ultimately qualify for the county semi-finals? Um, I'd say Clonty, Tumi Vara and Anna Carty. And then Borland, as you kind of pointed out, like they're well, Philly is a bit of a uh, how would you put it? He won't tell you the truth anyway. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but I think that they're a dark horse. I think they could possibly be the one. Uh, Shannon Rovers. It depends on on have the all the players that are available and to be able to play. Um, and Bally Bacon, I suppose, could be the unknown package in that. You know, they could be the one that could just come out of the blue altogether. Yeah. But yeah, I think the four are going to be uh, Clonality and a Carty. Uh, Boerland and uh, Tumi Barra. And then your predictions for a final pairing and an ultimate winners of the Junior B too. It, well, it, it depends on how the, how the, how the groups work out. Um, yeah. So, like I would I would suggest it'll be Clonality and Akarty maybe. And they, like if, they, if they're in the same group, obviously, uh, then that can happen. But if they're in opposite groups, it won't happen. Yeah. No. It's so it's one. It's just it one group. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's just one group, so I yeah. presume you know one will play four and 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 two will yeah. play three. Then, so you know, obviously it depends how all the games going. But I suppose the final toss, then your out, outright winner, then would be. Uh, I suspect Anna Carty. Like interesting, Anna Carty beat us last year in the league. We uh, turned them over in the league format of the of the uh, championship. And they got turned over by Tumi Vara, which knocked them out. But I just have an inkling that they'll be the one. And I have a suspicion their senior team is probably going to go, go well as well. So it depends on whether they have to draw off the, the B2s to, to supplement their senior yeah, team. Yeah, it could, so, it could it could affect as the year goes on. You know, it's just, yeah. I suppose it's all the things that could happen is what makes the championship so exciting. And uh, yeah. we're really looking forward to the. FBD Insurance Adult Championship beginning this weekend. Uh, the fixtures for the Junior B2 competition Sunday evening at 6 p.m. We have Valley Bacon Granger at home against Tumi Vara. Shannon Rovers will welcome Clonty Rossmore. And Anna McCarthy get their campaign off with a, a home game against Borland Wella. And I suppose just to wish all the teams the very best of luck. And Anthony, thanks a million for joining us here on the Camogie Report podcast. Thank you very much for having me. So that's all for this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. I want to thank uh, Cloda, Dee, Celine and Quiva for joining us here. And Kevin, of course, behind the scenes doing all the work with the camera and the editing. And best look at it in this, Kevin. It all kicks off on the 20th of August. Be sure to get out and get to a game. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in.